so let's talk a little bit about um, the, 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 the early part of the funnel. And, and you talked about inside view listening. So when you say listening, you've got a team that's basically watching the channels that are aggregated and, and, and basically presented to companies via inside view, right? Yes. So, so what do you listen to? So, you, it, many different levels. So, you know, within inside view as an ecosystem, we listen to our customers. Right. Um, we listen to the individuals that we know um, are customers of ours, as well as the brands. Um, so, when something happens with one of our customers. Uh, you know, whatever that trigger event is, yep. you know, we want to pr help promote that. We right. want to promote our customer base. Right. Uh, outside of that, there's a lot of evangelists um, and influencers and, and analysts out there that are also talking about our space. Yep. So we make a point of listening to those conversations yep. and then chiming in and having conversations with them when we see fit, yep. which then helps expand our brand further. Got it. So what can we do? And what do you think are a couple of the most important things for organizations to do to, to, to kick into social selling? Well, as we just talked about, I think listening is the key. You have to set up a very, not a sophisticated, but at least a basic listening platform. Right. Uh, inside you, for example, the application is a great start. Uh, you know, we use other social monitoring tools like Sysmos, yep. where we're able to look at large swaths of social data or things that are being mentioned and then analyze that a little bit further. Uh, but I think the first thing that you really need to do is listen. The second thing is is start building out your initial plan. Who's going to monitor it? Yep. Who's going to be engaging? Do you right. want it to run it across your entire company? Do you want to have it within you know a very small group? Most companies feel more comfortable. Like, let's have a pilot program with these two or three sales reps. Yep. Uh, and the best way to go about that is ask your sales team who yep. wants to who wants to be part of this. And then it's about going out and actually looking for the conversations. Right. You can start with your immediate customer base and start getting them to follow you and get understanding of what they're talking about and just having engagements with them. Yep. Uh, you know, we found that you know engaging with our customers, even outside of sales cycles, renewals or whatever else, uh, you know, we're finding that you know we don't know the exact correlation, but we can draw the dotted line that there's a return on that because they're they're staying customers. And you know, we believe that you know besides our product being outstanding, part of that is that we've become friends with these people. So that when there's a problem, there you know most people only call in support when something's broken. Right. You know, they're usually ranting and raving for an hour or a week before they actually call support and say, right. "I'm having this problem." You know, if you're having those conversations on a daily basis, as soon as something comes, they're like, "Hey, Coca, I can't get this to work," or "Hey, can you guys do X, Y, or Z?" And we and we start engaging, and we realize that that level of support, even though it's you know on a personal level, if it, they're communicating with me directly, yeah. or the sales rep directly, um, as opposed to going directly to the brand, um, it, it helps. 